I'm filmmaker Vashi Nedomansky, and I just finished directing my first virtual production, an ad campaign for a professional ice hockey team, the Coachella Valley Firebirds. We used Unreal Engine to create five photorealistic 3D environments, which we projected onto the LED walls the day that we shot. The two most important things that helped make our project successful was an unbelievable artist and an amazing workstation. Thiago is a lead Unreal artist of the highest caliber and the five environments he crafted for us matched the actual locations here in the desert. Our workstation consisted of a very powerful Dell Precision 7865 tower and a fire-breathing NVIDIA RTX A6000 GPU. Used in tandem, they gave us more than enough power for pre-production with Unreal, using Unreal on the set, and for post-production to finalize all the spots. Here's Thiago with a deep dive into his creative and technical process. So here we have the first environment. There's no force. We're going to talk a little bit of the challenges in the tests that went into building this environment, uh, including the part that's the most important one, which is to get the topology map of the valley into the scene. So as you can see here, let me just fly a little bit further away so we can take a look. Uh, there is a, a mountain range where our volume, LED volume area is located. And as you can see, there is also a huge geometry of the entire valley with some mountains in the, in the back there. And it's even with the fastest possible speed still takes a little bit of time to see everything so this is based on the lidar information from google and i uh, i obtained this, this information using a software called houdini which essentially allows us to use a service called mapbox and this service essentially gets your longitude information and how much of that information that you want to go through. So I ask it for a 10 kilometer square uh, information uh, slice. And as you can see here, it essentially gets all the topology of the area. It gets a rough uh, satellite texture that for far away is kind of useful. And what you can do with this, you can either export this as a geometry or you can convert this into a landscape that you can use inside uh, Unreal with the landscape too. What's also cool about this is that you can also get something called a US OSM filter, which essentially dictates uh, with uh, planes and geometries all the building information that is available. So essentially, we can rebuild all the cities in the valley and get that information inside the engine. I didn't specifically did this for this first environment here. And the reason for that is because we don't really see it from far away, especially because we are dealing with a snowy environment. As you can see, there's like a small snow falling around and it's very foggy there. So you won't be able to see it anyway, but from some other environments that use that information, including the road information too, that you get from the OSM data to construct some of this uh, environments back. So this thing here is all the roads, all the highways, all the uh, dirt roads, whatever you can you can imagine. You can see there's even some roads for some condos too, walk roads. So you can essentially export this information to Unreal and get that to build the entire uh, structure of the valley, which is really cool. You can even see the trails that go up the mountains too that people might take. Those are the map trails. So, so yeah, for this one in specific here, we really just needed a geometry from far away and, and the rough texture. You see, I didn't even bother to add uh, trees to this environment because it will be getting super heavy and we're trying to be performing. That's because, as you can see here, every time I press one on my keyboard, I go to this tiny area here where you see these volumes here. That's where the LED screen will be. And as you can see, when filming this on the volume, you wouldn't be able to tell there's no mountains there anyway. You have already the mountains you need around here. And that's what matters, right? There's some uh, wind blowing the, the, the trees. Those are speed trees. Uh, they are also built inside the, the engine. As a matter of fact, if you navigate through the project here, right, it's inside foliage. 
and you can see some of the the trees that I created. So this is not for this environment, but there's a model inside a software called SpeedTree, which essentially is a foolish uh, creation software that you can just build any complex different types of uh, trees. And this is one of them. It's kind of loading the materials here. As you can see the top bottom right here. And they have multiple levels of detail. This one is the LOD zero, which means it's the highest detail level. But as you go further away, you can see that the LOD changes. We can actually change here. And you can go from the very low poly, very far away, to the very high poly close by. So the trees that you see in the scene, same idea. Uh, this was based on a pack too. There's some assets there for a pack. I repurpose some of the assets from that pack and from the environment to kind of uh, make this clearing. One of the cool things here, let me show you. Some of that is invisible. So what I'm going to do is just make sure they're all visible again. And this is a representation of the LED panel walls. And what I want to show to you is one of the things that we need to really be mindful when we're dealing with virtual production that this projection here is reading whatever is on the other side. So one of the things that I needed to do, essentially, is creating these volumes here, as you can see, and they essentially exclude all the foliage from this mountain, from this area. So you might be asking, Tiago, what exactly what does that mean? Well, if I go here to this mountain uh, volume here that I created, I essentially am loading this is no force pack and in, in this there's a bunch of different assets including the trees the breeze and each one of them for example let me take this tree here for example has the information and this is the tree by the way if you're curious to know what that is so here's what i'm going to show it to you just to explain this concept right i had to clear this thing here because any intersecting geometry will be projected in the LED wall and the idea is we want it to be clear of any intersecting geo so what i'm going to do and in order to showcase to you, I'm going to drag that into our environment. So we're going to get a tree here. And you can see right away, as I'm dragging the tree, you can see the tree in the projection there. And if depending where this tree is, you can see that it completely over uh, takes over the projection center, which is not what we want. So the entire area needs to be clear. And this needs to be pushed further away somewhere else in order for this to look better, right? So your set dressing needs to be done into an area that is clear. And you're going to notice that some of the volumes that I created, they call procedural blocking volumes for foliage. They essentially do that. They remove everything. So I try to kind of get a, the shape of the circle and the, the, the wall volume here so we can really like have that stuff uh, hidden from the view. So you kind of want to have stuff closed. You don't want it to look like it's bare and then out of the sun there's like foliage everywhere. You just need to be close enough that looks realistic, but not so close that is intersecting. Even in, in areas that you won't be able to see, there's details there, right? There's like a kind of like a true branch there. And if I press one and go back, so it kind of like if, if you want it, if the director really wants to have this stuff, they can just say, you know what, I want to shoot a back shot. I want to go rotate to 180 and I want to shoot looking to the top of the mountain. So that's something that you could do because that detail is there. The idea is on virtual production is that you're doing something 360, right? Your point of reference is this thing here and everything around it should have detail so you can shoot any kind of shot. For this, the, the particle effects, we run some uh, plugins and you can see here on the lights, there's something called Dynamic Ultra Sky and Dynamic Weather. And essentially, this is a plugin that you can find in the marketplace that essentially allows you to have this volumetric clouds, which is very cool. And it also allows you to have different scenarios. So if I go to weather here, essentially right now it's light snow, but I can override this and say, you know what? I want this to be like uh, rain, light rain. So light so we can't even see, but I'm thinking, how about like a snowstorm, really strong snowstorm. So this was me kind of like using this tool and sagging by hand because I wanted to still be able to see the valley. I wanted to be sunny and I wanted to like in a way there's a little bit unrealistic, have the snow falling even though the clouds are not there to make sure that the, there will be a snowy weather, right? You'll be a little bit more cloudy, but I didn't want it to, to be so cloudy that you couldn't see. But even if that's something that you want to do, you can just go to here and just say, you know what, cloud coverage, let's go reset to the full on a snowy day. 
there's more clouds that you can see, which also, by the way, brings more of the high fog, the valley fog, which kind of occludes the, 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 the valley there. And what I want is the valley to be seen. I don't want it to have so much fog that it wouldn't be seen. So I keep repeating high fog, and maybe that's something that we can clarify. Because this is based on a scan, I also position this environment where the mountain top will be. So essentially, it's calculating the distance from the very bottom of the valley all the way up to make sure that, that whenever this fog is rendered, this is being rendered realistic, right? So this fog it would be in, in the valley if this was like a, a snowy day, and you wouldn't be able to see from the very top of the mountain. It's essentially, essentially how it should be if this was realistically done. It's all done so the view for here makes sense. I wanted to have, even if the camera was a little bit up, I wanted to have some trees here, kind of like in the way, you know? The way they clump together is also pretty cool because I made sure that they clump by seed distance. So the seeds of the tree will fall 50 feet up, uh, apart and then it will clump like this as it would be in real life. So they're clumping. You have you see this like your, your Christmas tree. I don't know the name of this. Purse trees. I think that's how you say in English. And you have this tiny ones full of, of snow. You have a, a bigger ones that have some snow in it. And I can control the snow coverage, by the way. I just, I just wanted to have some greeny so it's not all white. So I choose that the tall ones, there will be a little bit less snow taken to them because they are also the ones that shake the most because the taller the tree is, the more influence from the wind they will get. And I push this landscape all the way here. So from the view, you kind of see the top of those trees, right? You can go to landscape mode here, shift two. And landscapes are just a cool thing to work inside Unreal because it's essentially sculpting how the terrain will look. And some of this information is done in real time. I can really show to you. So as you can see here, there is a brush. And essentially, it's like any 3D software. You just like selecting the area of the brush. You can change the brush size here. You notice everything that is a slope angle is rock. And everything that is a soft angle, like a, a, a straight angle, is snow. That is by design. And this is done by the shader. I'm going to start like sculpting here. And as I sculpt it, you can see not only is affecting where that tree is going to be, but it's also creating this rock, the design texture underneath it. That's because I'm pulling this, and then it be, when it gets to a 45 degree slope angle, slope is the side, right? It kind of tells Unreal to say, yo, that's a too much of a of, of an angle. Instead of having snow, start adding like a rock texture. And that's why you see this rock texture repeating everywhere. So it's a, like an interesting way to have that information being assigned. And because everything is procedural, that's why it's so powerful. Every time I make a change, as you can see here, everything that is on top of it is updating. So if this kind of uh, plants, like the grass, cannot grow on top of a rock, that stuff is going to slowly disappear when I update it again, when I re-simulate this entire scene. When well, now they apply everywhere, and they can just like push them up. And that's kind of like the process of set dressing, right? And you have multiple tools that you can use. You can make a ramp from here to here. Like it's it's really it's really intuitive. Like I say that you created that ramp there. Kind of like looks like a rock formation almost. Maybe you want to smooth the edges here so it doesn't look like so sharp. And that was kind of like the same process that I did for this. But for this here I did a little bit clever because I know how this tool works. There's a very interesting brush called flatten. So essentially, flatten will take wherever you you clicking and pulling in a flat uh, way. It's kind of hard to explain. So let me show it to you. If I click here and I push, you see flatten this stuff. It created like a plateau. Everything else did. But if I push in the, in the top here, see creates another plateau. So essentially, what I did to push all the way like this, I just created a very big brush, and I said pull more of this, and increase the distance of the that cliff. And you can see some of that happening right now, right? Of course, I don't have any foolish there, so it's not applied. But if I re-simulate the foolish placement in the entire scene, it will. And if you look from here, you kind of see that like almost like a precipice, like the, the edge of a mountain, a cliff, just woo, right? And again, that texture being applied. So. The idea here was I, I, I have a landscape where my, my volume is seeing, right? 
So I'm sculpting the, around this landscape. And just to save me time, I also have some uh, scan mountain geometries that I can just place around for set dressing. Right, this is like a geometry render in Gaia to get all the materials looking cool. Because what I want from this is set dressing. And what I mean by set dressing, I just literally mean just click and drag. And now we have an additional mountain here that you can just say, you know what? From the perspective of the volume, I feel like we probably need to, I'm, I'm just like pretending I'm the art director, right? I think we probably need another mountain here. Right? And that's kind of like what I mean by set dressing. We just pick the directions that I think are interesting, that I'm seeing through, that I spoke with the with the, the client, and just saying, you know what? Well, from that angle, it might be cool to have a mountain there. And that's pretty much the goal of the virtual production, right? You're just trying to get a cool background looking, looking awesome. There's a lot of stuff that goes in here too, like the particle effects, and it's gonna be the same for every environment. Each environment has their own challenges. I think the challenge for this one here was really getting this thing here, the high fog to look look like it was only on the on the bottom part of it, and making sure that it was set dress enough around the volume that you have plenty of details. So no matter the direction you're shooting, you have stuff. This is the second map that we have here, Joshua Tree Desert. Essentially, I'm reusing the same workflow that I did for the other one, just a different environment. So using the same techniques, the landscape, the sculpting, as you can see, sculpting some uh, small hills, some uh, uh, grass patches, having some of the sand accumulate some areas, and then set dressing with rocks. And these are all from Quixel Mega Scan. And as you can see, there's some trees here. They're also from Speed Tree. They are specific from this area. And I created an SP tree and an important side on Rio just to set dress the scene a little bit. And you can see that I flattened the area there and put like a sand texture with a small transition to a little bit slope down to this valley here where I have all the cactus, all the foliage that I generated procedurally. And then went and added these rocks that are very particular from the environment. Again, making sure that this looks cool from the perspective of the LED wall. So all this is set dressing around. Tiny details like the foliage everywhere. You can see here while I zoom in, it loads the high fidelity one. And you can see most of this stuff is not even in the highest fidelity, like the rocks. They don't need to be high fidelity for this. this is, we need to remember this is for virtual production, right? And when this is, we see this in the viewport, we tend to think that if the stuff doesn't look super, super high quality, it's gonna look bad in the LED. But we forget that this is gonna be filmed by a lens, probably gonna be defocused because it's gonna be focusing the subjects. So we don't really need that super high fidelity quality on all of this, this rocks. That's one of the tricks that we do to kind of like save memory. You just lower everything to three levels of the tail, which essentially means saving memory for us, which allows us with that free memory to add more detail in the environment. Luckily for us, it's a desert, so it doesn't need to have the lot of details, but some of the trees, they can be a little bit challenging. Some of the cactus that we have, there's has a lot of detail, so that's the tail that we can add back to the scene for stuff to look a little bit better. The mountains in the end, in the back there, some of them are part of, of the of the landscape, some of them are added like this one here. The cool thing about this is that if, if you wanted to be playful, is if you wanted to make a game with this environment, you could. You could just walk around the environment if you wanted. It's a very beautiful environment. I really like this one, it's one of my favorites. This is environment tree, Kelso Sand Dunes. Same workflow as the other ones. This is a massive landscape with a lot of geometry in the very back to kind of like sell the look. Same uh, sky, also same time of the day as the, as the last one. The only difference here is that this is literally in the, in the middle of the desert. And the way that I achieved this look was just have a low, a, a low opacity rolling texture 
uh, through the, the landscape. That makes it look like it has sand going through it. It's pretty interesting. It looks very nice. As you can see, some foliage flying with the wind. I also make sure to add some particle effects that I repurpose from the snow one for the first environment from the snow top on the mountain and it just changed the color to be a little bit brownish so it looks like a sand being blown with dust on top of that I added this uh, footage from action VFX which is a real element by the way of lingering fog just moving around and what I did was just added like a, a texture of sand to it so it almost looks like it's sand just being blown around and just moving back and forth this give this look this looks very dirty very sandy like and this is just like set dressing there wasn't much to do in this environment so i tried to kind of like add details here and there and in some small uh rocks around so there's a, a tiny shadow being cast this is supposed to look very bare and as it does so the idea of the set dressing here is just adding stuff that's very subtle just to kind of give a, a, a more readable desert look. I want a dune to be there. I like the framing, but I feel like we're missing a dune in this area here. So we have like a few variations of different dune geometries that we can just place whenever we want. And what I was looking for is just like this very like the peak of the dune and then you can start seeing like the S curve of the dune. I was very happy with this one. I think it's very subtle. It looks very, very beautiful, especially because of the, the subtle details of the sand moving through the surface. I think it looks pretty cool. I try to make sure that this environment will look like it's a farm, a midday where people are collecting dates. And as you can see, if I go a little bit further away, you can see every, every, uh, Every tree is falling like a pattern. You have the more mature trees, the young lanes, and even the sap trees here too. And they will all design on a grid. And we even have the irrigation pipes where, so I can do any kind of arrangement that I want and really or direct where those will be. Here I'm trying to have one row of the saps and in between each one of those rows, a row of the, 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 the cable with the water. And then you can see there's like some water splashes here and there. There's a lot of detail here and the volume is here. So this is the view from the volume. You can see there's like rocks and branches on the floor. If you look to the, the left, you can see a bunch of dates. They're a little bit bigger than they would be in real life, but I did that so you could have the detail coming through on the LED. As you look to inside, you see there's like a, a mist of dirt from the desert. That's like rolling. And you see there's like some details like the cars storing with the boxes here and there. Machinery to get the dates from the trees. The cool thing about this is that even though this is the angle that we're choosing to shoot it, Ideally, if you wanted to move all the way here and shoot here, you have all the locations that you can shoot to. And that's because there's a tail all around it, doesn't matter the direction that you're looking, it's still going to look like the date farm. This environment is a little bit heavy, but it's totally usable. Maybe we just need to have a little bit more graphics card memory in order to operate, maybe lower a little bit of resolution of the textures. But yeah, it's my favorite environment so far. Really full of details. The car really helped to to sell the the idea that this is uh, a farm that's being operated uh, on a daily basis, and this is like the middle of a work day on the farm. This is the last environment. This is the HQ for the Firebirds, and as you can see, I use the information from Houdini again to get the correct location where it's gonna be built. And this is the actual building. And place based on the satellite data where some houses will be. I reconstructed the, the, the roads just here so you can see that division of the palm trees from one side to the other. And the view from the LED stage is this. 
One of the things they can also add to this one is the players. And by the way, there is like a geometry here. I'm just going to hide it so you can actually see how the landscape looks like. The fiber players are a little bit higher than the ground, so I'm going to move them down. And as you can see, they look quite epic with the shadow just stretching all the way. Is that I also added some of the Siggies from far away. I wanted this to look like it's a live space. From, far, from, the, from above, it kind of looks weird because there's no details. But what we really want is this angle, right? The straight angle. We want to have something there that look like a Siggy. The look like houses. And if you look from far away, you want to see something that looks like buildings. It's just like set dressing. It's not really designed to be pixel perfect. As you can see, there's a bunch of boxes in the shape of buildings. But when you see through the volume, it just helps sell the idea that we are in the valley. All of this is to scale, of course, and this is uh, based on the satellite data. So if I really go far away, you can see the entire valley here. And what I did here, I, I got the major area of the valley and behind it, I just added more mountain range. The, some of them match the, the, the Dega, some of them are just like additional random mountains. Spruce Street 4 looks absolutely incredible. The building was a, another artist that worked on it and it looks so good. I really, really like the final result. So my mission was just honestly making sure the materials look sweet and have that inside the engine. So from what you can tell, it was like the same workflow over and over, essentially. It's pretty straightforward once you master. That's why I spent some time in the snow environment showing you how to uh, do some of those tasks. But essentially, it's just like picking your landscape, getting the satellite information, uh, pulling there so it looks correct inside with the proper skin inside the reel, exporting the information from buildings, the information from roads, Sometimes use a reference like I'm using here to map that stuff. I kind of try to follow how it is across the street. And on this one in specific, what really helps sell the idea is to have some of the players and the roads, the cars. So it really looks like it's a place that resembles the real life. Thank you for watching and a big thanks to NVIDIA and Dell for collaborating with us to make this possible.